Welcome to my Emacs Conf 2022 talk, The Wheels on DBus. In this talk, we'll cover what DBus is, why you might want to use it, and how to use it with Emacs. DBus is fundamentally based on passing messages in between processes using the bus as a mediator. On top of this is built an RPC system with method invocation that has argument lists and return values like you might find in any programming language. These are commonly used for verb type actions like restart my computer. You can also associate a collection of attributes with objects on the bus, and these are called properties. The properties can be read-only, write-only, or read-write. Signals are a way of notifying participants on the bus of updated state and are the basis for building dynamic user interfaces that react to changes in the system. It has a static and strong type system, so if you send a message with the wrong type signature, it simply gets rejected instead of going through to the remote service. It also manages service life cycles, so you're not running services at all times. They can be started and stopped by DBus on demand. DBus has two major use cases. The first is acting as a lower level substrate for higher level programs like a graphical desktop environment. For example, if you want to manage your network connectivity from your graphical environment, instead of having to build all of that from the ground up, you can rely on the DBus service to do that and only build the graphical component of it. This gives you consistency between desktop environments and reduces code duplication. Another application is automating desktop programs. If your program offers a DBus service, then it can be remote controlled. And if all of your programs offer DBus, you can control your entire desktop. Let's look at the abstractions that DBus provides. The top level object is called a bus, and it's like a partition that messages get exchanged inside of. Messages don't cross buses. Inside of a bus are services. Services are normally identified in reverse FQDN order, so org.foobar.fooService. Each service provides some set of features related to a particular area of functionality. Inside of each service are objects. Objects use a path notation and usually follow the same reverse FQDN format as the service identifier. Each object has one or more interfaces. An interface is like a facet that you can use to interact with an object, and inside of the interface are properties, methods, and signals, which we covered before. Properties are attributes that can be read or written, methods are verbs that you can call to invoke an action, and a signal is something that's used to move state in between a service and another participant on the bus. There can be any number of interfaces on an object, any number of objects in a service, and any number of services on a bus, and any number of buses on a system. There are two well-known buses, and these roughly map to those two use cases I mentioned before. The system bus is for interfacing with hardware and operating system level concerns like disks, networks, and so forth. The session bus is tied to a user login and is more in the desktop automation use case. There are some common interfaces you'll find if you go exploring DBus. The introspectable interface is the basis of a lot of the reflection features. It has a single method called introspect that returns the XML interface description of whatever you call it on. Peer is used for lower level connectivity, for example, pinging a service to see if it's running. And the properties interface is the basis of the read-write properties, which are secretly method calls under the cover. Just about every object you interact with on DBus will support all three of these interfaces. Additionally, object manager is used for services that manage collections of objects. For example, the disk service has an object for each disk that's attached, and the object manager allows you to enumerate all of those. Emacs supports DBus natively since version 23.1. It's a combination of native bindings with a C library and dbus.el. While there are some ports to, of DBus to non-Linux operating systems, it's probably only available on Linux and almost certainly only usable on Linux. If you want to interact with DBus from Emacs, it's fairly straightforward. There's a collection of functions like DBus get property, or DBus call method, etc. And they almost all take this same set of four arguments at the beginning, bus, service, path, and interface. In this case, it takes a single additional property, which is the one to read. And what we're calling is the hostname one service, which gives you just a little bit of information about the system, like its hostname or its chassis. And in this case, you can see I'm running this presentation off my laptop. 
The problem with this, and what I don't like about it, is that all of these identifiers are very verbose and very repetitive. And if you end up calling these a lot, it gets old really quickly. So I wrote a wrapper called dbase, which is convenience on top of the built-in functions. Most of the stock functions have dbase versions just by replacing dbus with dbase. And let's look how that works. The fundamental idea of dbase is that you can bind together all of those arguments into a single object that represents the endpoint. This is an EIEIO class, and it takes keyword arguments, so there's never any chance of mixing up which thing is what. So this sets the endpoint to that object, calls dbase get property on it, and you can see it works exactly the same. The thing that's really nice about this, though, is it knows that so many of these arguments are very similar that it can compute most of them if you don't provide them all. So if you just say service, it will assume that you want the same object that matches and the same interface that matches, and it works just the same. I find this very, very convenient. You can also reuse the object instead of having to repeat every argument with every function call, which is a really great improvement in ergonomics. Because so many objects have multiple interfaces, you often find yourself needing to look at a different aspect of that object. This is supported with the built-in EIEIO clone me method, which takes an object and a set of keyword arguments to replace. So in this case, we can see we're calling the properties method, but everything else on that endpoint is the same. And then we're going to call the method get all on that properties interface, and it's going to return all the properties of the org free desktop hostname one interface inside of that object. And if we run that, we can see there's the hostname and some other information about the laptop that I'm running this on. DBase also supports object binding. This creates a lexical context in which the dbase object is the implicit target of any dbus function. This is really convenient if you need to fetch multiple properties or otherwise interact it with the same endpoint in multiple different ways. And you can see it, I'm still on a laptop and it's still named Mison. You can also, if you don't want to use the object, you can provide the raw argument list. Under the covers, this is basically an flat where you're currying all of these functions, so they start with those argument lists. And you can see I'm running on a Linux machine, which should not be surprising. DBase also has an experimental code generation feature. It outputs EIEIO code with one class per DBus interface. This includes accessors for all of its properties with an in-process cache, so if you read one property, you don't have to go back to the bus to read it again. It also outputs generic functions and method implementations for the dbus interface methods. It includes name mangling options so you can control how everything is named. And you can generate the code either via introspecting a live system or providing an XML interface description, which is handy if you want to use it as part of a non-interactive build. I think this has a lot of promise, but it doesn't feel quite right yet, so any feedback or contributions are very welcome. Let's generate some ELISP code for that hostname one service we were interacting with before. DBase gen class is the generation class, and it says to create a class that matches this interface, named hostname one, and then the rest of these arguments are the same ones to target the endpoint, just like with DBase object, because it extends DBase object. DBase gen code is a generic function that takes any DBase gen class, there is different classes for functions, properties, etc and it creates all of the code for it. If we evaluate it, we can see the results look about like we would expect. Creates a def class named hostname1, which extends dbase object, has all of the slots and accessors defined, and then methods that define everything that you might want to do with it, including documentation. This is based on introspecting a running system, but as I mentioned, you can provide an XML interface description instead, if you like. DBase also comes with DBase Object Manager, which is convenience for the DBus Object Manager interface. This is used in a lot of places in DBus where an object manages other objects. For example, the Network Manager object manages network hardware objects, and using the Object Manager interface, you can enumerate all of the network hardware, and by subscribing to the signals, you can be notified when they change. DBase Object Manager keeps a local cache and will fire a callback on any change. So it's the building block for that dynamic user interface like you would see in a desktop system, but inside of Emacs. Let's do some demos. Discomfort is an interface I wrote for UDISCs2, which is what manages all of the block device hardware. 
And again, it has that dynamic desktop-like interactivity and mostly will just do what you mean. This is definitely alpha state. It doesn't have all the features, but it's good enough that I use it daily. So here's discomfort. And you can see it has a list of all your hardware, what type it is, and where it's mounted. I have a little USB extension cable here, and I'm going to plug in a disk just to show you how this works. You can see when I plug it in, just a moment later it shows up in that list automatically. I don't have to press any key, I don't have to refresh it, it's just there. If I unplug it, it's gone. Plug it back in, and there it is. And you can see it's an encrypted volume. So in order to do anything with this, I'm going to have to supply a password. Just pressing enter goes into the do what I mean mode, and it asks for the password. In this case, I've chosen the very secure password of password. I hit enter, and it unlocks it, and it mounts it, and it opens Dured looking at it. And here's a little readme. Let's see what it says. Hello, EmacsConf. So that's my demo of discomfort. In addition to acting as a client for Dbus, Emacs can also offer services to other Dbus clients. This is a really interesting opportunity because it allows many different programs to integrate with Emacs in ways that were previously very difficult. You can use this as an alternative to Emacs. The difference is Dbus provides a full API, so instead of Emacs client being a sort of fire and forget system, you can actually get results back from the remote operation. So here's some code. Here's a dbus eval function, which takes a string, reads it, and evaluates it, and returns whatever that value is. And then we have a dbase bind block that sets up an object on the session bus. Again, that's my user login bus. It offers this dbus service emacs. This is a constant inside of the uh, dbus.el package. And again, the path is a constant in there. And we're going to create this interface org.gnu.emacs.eval and then register a method called eval that calls that dbus eval function. Pretty straightforward, only a handful of lines of code. To test this out, we're going to use the dbus send utility. This is a command line program that interacts with dbus. We're going to tell it to wait for and print the reply, that the message should be sent to the session bus, that we're going to talk to the org.gnu.emacs service on that bus, and the slash org slash gnu slash emacs object inside that service. On that object, we're going to interact with the org.gnu.emacs.eval interface and call it eval method. We're going to call that method with a single string argument, which is indicated by the string prefix, and then a form to evaluate. I actually have to run this from a shell, because if I try using it in org, it wedges. Org Babel blocks waiting on completion, which blocks the dbus service from responding. I really wish Emacs was multi-threaded. But let's try it out. So if we run this, we can see that we get a return, and that's an unsigned integer of 32 bits with a value of 3. So like I was saying, this is really a two-way API where you can communicate back and forth between Emacs and another program. It's not just fire and forget. I think that's really cool. Let's try another demo. What about a remote org capture? What if you could trigger an org capture from any program on your desktop? I think that would be pretty cool. And we can see, there it is. All right, I think I've got that one covered. So I do want to say that remote eval is probably a bad idea from a security perspective, but the point of this is some quick and dirty demonstrations of what can happen and to get people's imaginations flowing, because I think this is something that offers a lot of promise for Emacs. I think having a full-blown Emacs desktop environment where it can do all the things that a GNOME or a KDE environment can do is very exciting. And if you want to have a traditional GUI with Emacs as a more integrated participant of it, its service mechanism offers a lot of ability to do that. In the micro sense, I think there's a lot of improvement that can be made to either dbus.el or to dbase. The main one is handling of the type system. Lisp's dynamic type system doesn't mesh particularly well with the static strong type system that dbus offers, and having some convenience to assist that would be very helpful. There's also some weird interfaces. For example, some things return identifiers as an array of integer code points instead of a string, and there should be a common way of handling that. I also think that the service support could be improved. 
even though I gave the demo service, it's not really a great Dbus citizen because it doesn't offer that introspection mechanism. And so the actual methods are pretty much invisible to other participants unless they already know that you're using Emacs. That's my talk. Thank you. You can find me on mastodon.social or on Libera Chat.